<laughs> oh, come on. A siren in the background, they're coming for us. Jeez. Hey, everybody. I'm back here with Jeff Shiwi at the PXL Studios. Uh, Jeff has a different word for it, Pixel. Oh, well, now you're bringing it up? Yeah, Pixel. <laughs> And uh, we're, we're going to get into some real interesting stuff at this point. You've talked, uh, we've talked about uh, calibrating your monitor and actually uh, all the things that are necessary. But now, how do we actually get a file and make sure the file that looks good on the screen it actually comes out that way on a print? And so this is our little segment called soft proofing. Mm -hmm. And there's probably nobody better to teach soft proofing than Jeff. I did kind of write the book on it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah a few other And things. I did kind of work with the engineers to make sure uh, soft proofing in Lightroom worked the best. Yep. But you're going to be working with Lightroom on yes. this. Yeah. There are a number of other applications that do soft proofing too, so make sure you understand how they work, but I think you'll get the general concept. Yeah, based you, upon you can do it in Photoshop and you can do it in other applications. Uh, I just happen to find that Lightroom soft proofing implementation is optimal. And you'll see that on the uh, by following the screen, some things that we're about to do here. Uh, the other thing you'll note, although I'm working on the laptop, I'm actually using my uh, NAC display. It's a PA311D <laughs> with the spec review with the puck because I don't want to puck around. So I have calibrated my display and we've talked about okay. calibration and other uh, situations, but the important thing is to have a hardware calibrated display and a, a profile that very accurately describes the color rendering of the display. And it's the uh, NEC. So I have a bunch of images I could have printed out um, uh, Kevin. I'm sitting in there, Dano. <laughs> up, up here, or Dano. Uh, so I got a high key image and a low key image, and I'm going to show you a little bit about soft proofing. I'm going to go into the develop module, and you'll notice on the bottom of the screen um, there is a uh, tag called soft proofing. Now, so far, all I've done is optimize the image for how I want it to look on the display. Right. That's my master image. The background goes to white, and it's paper white based upon the spectral data in the actual profile itself. So whatever paper profile I select, it picks up and uses the white. And you've selected your paper profile. Well, I haven't gotten there yet. You're jumping ahead. Well, that's me. I was that <laughs> way in all you, my classes. I don't know. Usually he's backwards. Sometimes <laughs> he jumps ahead. So I'm going to uh, show you that you can change the background, uh, paper white, or 100% white, or black. Uh, one of the things that I have found is that, uh, and the reason that the background defaults to paper white is, and it wasn't only myself, it was also Bruce Frazier and other color geeks like Andrew Rodney, basically said that what you want to do is evaluate your image prior to printing based upon the white of the paper that surrounds. I like to print with a border. We haven't really talked about that much, but I don't print borderless. I like to have a border around. And if you have a white paper white border, the image itself will look darker, unless you address that in soft proofing. Right. I'm planning on printing this with platine, which is our kind of new favorite paper. But I could print it on luster, and you'll see what happens is the white gets a little darker and a little bluer, and the whole image kind of gets a little, um, uh, I, I don't know, pulled Flat, back, yeah, flatter. Yeah, flatter. Uh, if I were to print on uh, velvet fine art, uh, that actually looks pretty good. Well, it's it got almost a white you can almost watch the white go a little bit on a warmer side, too. Yeah, but if I print it on texture, <clears throat> these are all different possibilities, exhibition fiber. Uh, and you'll see it all change based upon the actual profile, but I'm going to do plantain. Now, there is a button here that calls simulate paper and ink. And what this is, is it's the make my image look like crap button. If you uncheck it, the color rendering of particularly the new generation of Epson on like plantain or a Barita, uh, <laughs> you don't see much difference. 
But when you click it, you'll see that the white gets a little darker and the black gets a little lighter. Not by much, but you can see there is a difference. So then the question is, what rendering intent? Oh boy, here we go. And the rendering intent that you should use is the rendering intent that makes your image look the best. And the only way to know that really is either um, uh, use soft proofing and uh, check the different rendering or, or spend the ink and paper yeah, make to make two a prints. print. Yeah, make two prints. And, and there's nothing wrong with that except for it's wasteful. I like to kind of predict in advance how the image is going to look. Perceptual, preserves color accuracy, but flips out a gamut on relative. And perceptual, preserves out a gamut detail, but may change in gamut colors. Also, it has a tendency of changing the um, kind of the tonality. Yep. If color and the relationship of color to other color is more important in the image, the odds are perceptual will be the first one you should check. If it's the tonality and the relationship of tone values to each other, not color, then relative color metric. And I'm kind of of the 80, 20, 80% 80 of the time I tend to use relative color metric. 20% of the time it's perceptual. perceptual. But the only way to know, I mean, that's just statistics and, and uh, stats are meaningless. The only way to know is actually check the different rendering intents. So then the question is, I can come back up here and do the before after. Well, you can really see the difference there, can't you? Yes. So on the left, on the screen here, is my master image, what I want it to look like, uh, what I have already decided. And then on the right is the uh, soft proof, what it will look like. If I do nothing, I'm just going to hit the print button. That's what it'll look like. And you'll see that the contrast is lower. The color saturation is down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is to create a proof copy. And what that allows me to do is to come in and create a virtual copy of the master image, and then I can adjust it. I'll maintain the setting of the master image, sure. but then have a virtual copy that has the adjustments. And I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna punch up the contrast a little bit. I'm going to come in and punch up the whites just a little bit. And you're really basically comparing to the left, but really working on the right image to your taste now. Yes. The other thing that I will say is that while the master image is what I've already kind of decided I want the image to look like, what I really care about is what it's going to look like in print. print yes. And there are times when I will adjust the soft proof image differently than the master image because particularly with uh, um, textured um, fine art paper, uh, you know, there's going to be so much of a difference that you might as well go ahead yeah. and tweak it to optimize it. So I'm going to come in and do a little bit of plus saturation. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Um, you agree? I'm, I think it's a marvelous looking picture. And okay. I like the way the reds have now uh, brightened up a little bit. You've, you've got a little more detail in the uh, purple flowers next to it. Yeah. The blue's quite pleasing, and the greens, I think, have not really changed terrifically, but they just look very, very pleasant. So, so the, the, the cool thing is that this is a pretty um, uh, punchy image to yeah. start with. Uh, in the old days, this would have been a very difficult image to get uh, in inkjet printing, but in today's printers, it's like, oh, Well, you know, so the readers know this is a bunch of flowers and a piece of ice. Yeah, frozen flowers. Fl frozen, frozen. Flows and yeah, try that again. Flows and flowers. Flows and flowers. Flows and frozen. Frozen. These are frozen flowers. Puck yourself. <laughs> so I want to talk about the print. Uh, I have a, a preset here. Platine relative color metric, one and a half inch borders, 
for the 1722P900. It should be mentioned that you have a number of presets set for a number of different formatting and papers in your Lightroom library there. Ah, you are right, Grasshopper. I thought, I just want to mention One that. of the reasons that I like printing out of Lightroom, there are a couple of reasons, but one of the reasons is the fact that I can create a preset to make sure that all the different settings in the print uh, page setup and in the print settings and all of the settings over on the right side of the Lightroom uh, print module, all were set correctly. Right. And then all I gotta do is come down here and hit this print button, make a print. Oh. And the nice thing is if I've got 10 images I wanna print, I just select the images and hit the print button once to make 10 prints. Yep. Whereas in Photoshop, if you wanna do 10 prints, you have to open up each of the 10 images, correctly set the settings on all 10 images, and hit the print button 10 times. That sucks. Yep. Now, um, Kevin is a um, image print aficionado, and he uses image print uh, in lieu of Lightroom, because he doesn't know how to use Lightroom. Um, not, not true, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, kind of true, right? <laughs> Uh, so the, the bottom line is that I find uh, Lightroom to be an excellent workflow environment and it makes it easier to get good prints. The other thing is that in this case, I've got all the settings. Now, the one thing that I need to do is come in here. This setting saved as relative color metric versus perceptual. I'm going to click here and click on perceptual. And you'll notice that the light turned out uh, under the presets and that's okay because if I wanted to, I could create another preset of perceptual yep. rendering. So then the other thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit is print resolution here. I've got it set to 720. The 900, the P900 printer uh, has very high resolution printing capabilities. And one of the things that you'll note is since I've got dimensions and uh, image cells, all these uh, show guides set, uh, I see the dimensions. The image is going to be 14 by 18.6 at 536 PPI. This is a pretty high resolution oh, image for a 1722. So you might think, well, 536, should I downsample this to 360, which is kind of the native resolution? I don't think you should. No, of course not. Why waste pixels if you've got it? Especially if they're available. Yeah. What I end up doing is clicking on the print resolution, sending it to 720. I'm going to show you that in the print settings dialog, under printer settings, I'm going to do max quality, and that sets it to 5760 DPI and automatically sets uh, finest detail to on. Quite honestly, I, in fact, uh, um, I'm going to make a an article that I wrote a decade ago, actually, but it's still uh, uh, is relevant, yep. uh, proving that you can get better detail if you upsample to the reported resolution. If your image native resolution is below 360, upsample to 360. If it is above 360, upsample to 720. And if you're printing to Canon, the magic numbers are 300, 600. Sure. So don't downsample, nope, nope. upsample. So then basically, uh, I'm gonna make sure that I'm using print sharpening uh, uh, and I'm gonna set the media to glossy. Uh, and then basically, I'm gonna click print. I could click printer, but then I'd have to go through the dialogues again. The advantage of just clicking print means that the image will come out Here's your print, looks good. Yeah. Here we go, we'll put it up on our GTI light inspection box. Here is the soft proofing screen. Wow. And there's the printed output. It doesn't suck, does it? <laughs> it's uh, an exceptional looking image. What I really like here, the, the things that I always look for when I look at a print are you know exploring the shadow areas. So your eyes are drawn to the black areas and they wanna see the detail and the fact that you can you know, have blacks, but these subtle grays, the subtle colors in here with the bubbles that you want to explore. Yeah, I am, as a matter of fact. I love the kind of subtle purple up here. 
The yellow is just gorgeous. Very well. That one's perfect, but it's pretty. Yeah, it's as close as you're going to get, most likely. Very good job. Yeah. Well, this stuff really does work. Uh, does. The other thing that I was going to show briefly, we've already done this. Um, one of the things that soft proofing also allows you to do, and one of the reasons I advocate for it, it allows you to actually pick what paper might be best to use for the image. So this image, which is the gumball, I've got up here, and I will show you that the platine, which is what the print is, is pretty much the best D-Max yeah, that you right. can get. I measured this, and the D-Max is in the 2.4 range, uh, actually about 2.44, which is a really good D-Max. For example, I also made a print, which I'm not going to bother showing, under the textured, and you could see that uh, with the uh, lighter D Max and the darker paper white, uh, the image kind of loses the depth. So just moving back and forth between platine and textured. You can see the difference there. Yeah, it yeah. definitely goes a little bit on the more flatter side on the yeah. grays in the background. And this is really a watchword to helping you pick what uh, paper might be the best. Now, well, we did a segment on the, the whole I, thing of picking paper, but um, I think I've really come to like the platine. And yeah. um, I know I think you have too. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the other images that I'll show you is the um, uh, cactus um, tintype. And this is a situation where because of the nature of the image, the platine is fine, you know, it's got a little bit uh, punchier black so yeah. all. But I actually like the textured. Yeah, the textures come out in the, the shadow areas. They're not as filled in. That's the whole thing about soft proofing is not only does it help you make your image better in the final printed form, it actually helps you pick what media might be best for your image. Got any questions? No, I think you illustrated it quite well. and. Uh, it, it, you have to see the prints in, in real. It's too bad the audience can't really touch them, which I think is what it's all about. But both well, of those prints are sometime very- Sometime in the not too distant future, if you like these images, they'll be available for sale. Okay. From my uh, website. But Good. just point out the fact that I am a photographer that is willing to sell prints. I'm pretty sure you sell your prints I sell too, my prints so, also. Uh, if you really like the images, uh, uh, buy the prints. Uh, but I think that uh, you would agree that soft proofing is a very useful tool to basically perfect your image, get it as good as you can possibly get. I think it's important. Uh, many people can just print easily if they don't want to worry about it. But boy, it's one of those things like as you begin to enjoy printing, you're going to enjoy making sure that you get what you see on the screen out on print. And that's only done by calibrating your monitor properly, mm -hmm. having the proper profiles for your paper, mm -hmm. and then setting everything up and doing the soft proofing as we just showed you here. And it really is remarkable when you're sitting here and we've got the prints right next to us and everything, how close they are. So yeah. really a good job. But the other thing is that when you're evaluating the prints, it's also useful if you have a standardized viewing environment. And that some people might ask, well, you know, uh, I don't know where the prints are going to hang. They could be in a gallery with tungsten. Yep. They could be on a wall with uh, like house lighting, which is very warm, or, you know, on a, a office building with daylight or heaven forbid, ugly fluorescence. Those are all things that you have to deal with. But in order to maintain a high level of, of quality, it's useful to have a standard of viewing environment to evaluate the and, and many things are produced to the standard. You see the color behind here and everything kind of relativity, relative wise, you know, changes in a household. You know, if you buy a cushion for a couch, it probably look different a little bit too, depending on how your lighting is and so forth. But this is a, probably a good start. I don't think, you know, people, many people are going to have any issue with anything going up on a wall and mixed lighting with what we've done here. Anyway, Jeff, thank you very much. As always with you, not only are you uh, a good articulator of these kind of complicated processes, which aren't all that complicated, they're steps. Work with a calibrated monitor, proper paper profiles, soft proofing, making your adjustments, 
and then output into the print. You did an excellent job. Thank you very much. As always, I learn something every time I sit down with you. I appreciate it very much. Ah, grasshopper. And to all our readers out there, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.